Hello there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are starting a new series, the Fisherman Shack series. And this is a project that I've been working on uh, like a couple of months ago. And it had a really nice engagement and people really enjoyed uh, this project and this render overall. So I decided what better way to, you know, to do something with it than to actually make it into a tutorial series. So here we are. This is the first uh, video of that series and we're gonna go through quite a lot of things uh, in this series. So, you know, we are gonna start in Blender where we're gonna do the block out, we're gonna go and do a little bit of modeling, then we are gonna jump into ZBrush to do some high poly sculpting, we're gonna jump back into Blender where we're gonna take the, those sculpts and we're gonna, we're gonna you know, make them a little bit uh, more performant, performant. and uh, there we go into Substance Painter, Painter, we're gonna texture everything that we are making and then we are gonna bring that back into Blender and pretty much to the set dressing, the lighting and that whole good stuff. So this series is not actually a beginner series. So um, if you are a beginner who just started out, I don't recommend you start out with this series because as I've mentioned uh, right now, this is not a Blender specific tutorial. So we're, we're gonna use a bunch of other tools, a bunch of other software in order to create the final, um, the final image. So, you know, if you're just starting out uh, with this, with Blender, then I recommend you you do a couple of other series first and then when you're a little bit more comfortable with 3D in general and Blender, just, you know, you can revisit uh, this series again. I was looking around Pinterest for some inspiration for that. So what I ended up doing is going on Pinterest and search for, uh, search for diorama concept art. Go into Pinterest and I, I search for diorama so like diorama concept art just like that and it eventually this is this was like the, fir the first result and you know I, I really liked it because well it's kind of simple you know there's not much uh, there's not much going on so I knew it, it's not gonna take me a lot of time to create which is exactly what I wanted I wanted something that I knew I could do in a couple of days so this right here incorporated um, incorporate that you know it incorporated real well if you indeed are a beginner and you like something more appropriate to your uh, to your level there is uh, there is this tutorial that Grant has made uh, C-Shack and it's loosely it's mostly based on the same concept art so he pretty much recreated this as well but in a more stylized version in a more simplistic way which is actually a lot closer to, to the original concept uh, than, uh, than, the, than, than my version, which is a little bit more complex and realistic. So if you're a beginner, I recommend you go over to Grant Abbott's uh, YouTube channel and you know do this series, which is a more introductory uh, beginner tutorial and you know get a, get some good info out, out of this. All right, so here we are in Blender and I've already set it up my my project. I'm, I'm inside Cycles, I'm using the GPU and you know, a couple of things I always change when I, when I start a new project is I make sure those are, you know, something like 250. Uh, first of all, let me enable this. So you can see that, I'm gonna make like 20 like that all right now you can see all the buttons that I'm pressing um, yeah so film I always do transparent because I don't want to I would I don't want my HDR right to be visible performance I always change this to 256 um, color management I always do a high contrast just because I like it more that way it's just a preference thing and besides those tech those settings I'll I also added a an HDRI for the lighting so if I jump into um, the rendered view you know there's some lighting and 
uh, yep, this is pretty much my initial setup. I'm gonna delete this because we don't need it. And what we are gonna first going to do is let me know. So if we look at this concept art, we first want to do a blockout. So what is a blockout? A blockout is a way of conceptualizing um, the general shape and the generally the general way something is constructed. So you know that helps you out with understanding what's the the silhouettes and the right shapes for what you're gonna create. What's the the right scale and dimensions um, for that? So what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna look at this uh, concept art and we are gonna try and you know come up with a few things. So first of all, we have to decide just how big this is. And you know, this is not a blueprint. We don't have that kind of information on hand. Uh, you know, you, we don't have numbers over here spe spe specifying the scale or, or anything like that. So we're gonna have to make a, um, a guessing game. So, you know, let's just, uh, let's just think about this doorway, you know, doorways are pretty universal. So what I like to do is find a pretty universal uh, thing in my concept art. So for instance, this door, because this doorway, because doorways are pretty much the same uh, everywhere, you know, they're about 2.1, 2.2 meters in height, and they're about like one meter um, on the length. Which is pretty, you know, it's pretty universal. So now, now that we have that in mind, so let's assume that from this point to this point, there's one meter, and this guy is about, you know, 2.1 meters, let's say. Um, we can extrapolate just how big this should be. So for m for my final project, where I did this uh, off camera, what I ended up with was a. I decided that this piece is gonna be a 4x4 four four square and I pretty much just worked based on that. So let me put this onto the right and okay now in Blender what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much going to create a, a cube and I'm gonna make its origin point sit at the bottom. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna assume that my uh, concept art, that this piece over here is gonna be a four by four uh, meter kind of piece. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You know, I'm gonna take this square, I'm gonna go over here to the item and I'm gonna make this a four by four. And for uh, the height, I'm gonna make it like, 10 centimeters, right? And I'm gonna apply the scale, so Control A, rotation and scale, and now uh, this is our placeholder stuff. Um, yep, so now I'm gonna move this a little bit up, so let's just put it like two meters above the ground. And I'm also gonna make another plane, like so. And I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna say that this is the water plane. So, you know, I can do water plane. I'm gonna name that. And I'm gonna name this first floor. Uh, honestly, when I'm working alone, I'm never, uh, I'm never organized like that. I never rename uh, my meshes. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna try and be more civilized <laughs> that way. Uh, another thing I like to do is going under here and enabling cavities and setting the type to both and this ensures like a little bit of cavity and ambient occlusion happens so uh, things are a little bit more clearer as you can see I get a little bit of shadowing and a little bit of highlighting on the on the edges and that helps me um, understand more what I'm working with especially at this at this stage where everything is uh, super primitive and no details details at all all right so you know this is the main piece what i want to do now is let's get the no where is the image okay let's get 
Um, let's, let's move forward. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so, you know, we've made this first piece. Now let's add a little bit of logs, you know, like uh, those cylinder shapes that hold up uh, the structure. So what I'm going to do is add a cylinder and I'm going to, once again, make the origin point sit at the top. I'm going to make this a little bit uh, taller and I'm going to make it thinner like this and I'm going to move the cylinder uh, to the side over here where it should where it should be positioned so something like that I think I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner actually and a little bit uh, shorter like so and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy that over here so and another one over here I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do the fourth one over here because as you can see in the image this one stretches uh, all the way to the to the second floor and I want to get the second floor done before I do before I decide on the on the size of this guy so that's all right you know what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually I think I'm gonna do um, let's see I think I'm gonna do uh, the cabin for uh, right now so for that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another cube once again make the origin point sit at the bottom and I'm gonna take this and gonna put it on top of it so, yeah make sure it's it sits on that guy on this on this plane and I'm gonna go something like this I'm gonna place it just about here kind of like this and I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter so it doesn't go through the floor something like that all right and this is my cabin cabin and what I want to do right now is Right, so what what I'm gonna do right now is find like the actual scale of this. So once again, I'm gonna pretty much assume like how big this is, and I'm just gonna go with what I know I used for my final for my final version. So I'm gonna make um, this guy. So on x axis, I'm gonna make it be 2.5. And on the Y axis, I'm gonna make it be 225, like so. Now I'm gonna put this around here, like this. That's all right. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and rescale it on on the on the Z axis as well. So I'm gonna make it about 535, let's say. That's all right. Um, yeah, and this is kind of the main uh, block out for, for our cabin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the roof as well. And the roof is really simple. You just have to select the, the top face and you're going to extrude it outwards and scale it all, on all axes except for the Z axis. Kind of like so. Okay, all right, let's scale it a little bit more. Maybe like this. Now I'm gonna extrude it upwards. You know, something like this would be all right. And then I'm gonna insert the face. And now I'm gonna extrude once again downwards. And now we've ended up with uh, the roof which is which is nice all right before we get uh, before we move any forward let's make the second floor so you know we have two pieces connected we have those uh, this part that goes in that direction and this guy that goes in the other direction so 
let's do that. What I'm gonna do now, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna reuse this cube. So I'm gonna shift the, this guy, I'm, I'm gonna move it a little bit upwards, like this. And we can see that this guy should be a bit over the line to to, to the edge of the cabin. So what I'm gonna do is go into edit mode, select this face, I'm gonna move it uh, just about there. Kind of like this and let's see this is a 242 let's make it around 250 like so that's all right that's that's good and uh, for the other piece this guy let's actually you know reuse this guy once again I'm gonna Move it a little bit upwards like this and let's see um, I'm gonna take this face I'm gonna move it kind of around here check the concept once again it should be around the middle of the cabin so that's what I'm gonna do and look at that that's already in a pretty sweet spot and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this guy a little bit outwards like so. So we, you know, we get that. And what else? What else? What else? All right. Now I'm going to make sure that these two pieces are on the same level. So for that, I'm going to copy this guy and I'm going to paste it over here. Now they are both on the same level. And what I want to do now is I'm going to I'm gonna take this face over here. I'm gonna move it uh, out outwards like this until they, you know, kind of touch over there, like this. That's that's fine. All right, and I'm gonna apply the rotation and scale to all of those pieces. And now I'm gonna move those guys a little bit upwards. So maybe over there just on that line that's that's you know seems reasonable it gives enough space both on the bottom and on top which is nice all right and now i'm gonna copy this guy since i've uh, i'm done with um i'm done with that part and i'm actually gonna move this a little bit more outwards just because I like it that way a little bit more what else we need to do let's also make this piece go a little bit more outwards like so to give a more uh, more strength to our structure even though we are not gonna see that part so we can Yeah, let's 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 uh, let it be like that. All right, so now I'm gonna take this guy, and I'm gonna copy it over here in the middle of this piece. So that seems about right. Okay, I'm gonna leave it over there, and now I'm gonna um, make scale this on the Z axis like so. That seems to be pretty all right. That seems to be close to what I've done at first. Yeah, that's that looks kind of all right. I'm actually gonna shade those guys to be smooth. So, yeah. Now they look kind of weird, the shading. So select all of them and uh, go to this tab. Go to normals, hit, uh, hold the alt button, pressed, and press the auto smooth. And now they're gonna look the way they should be looking. All right. Um, let's see what else do we need to do before we do other stuff. Hmm. Let's do a little bit more. Um, 
block out over here. So if you look at this image, we see we have uh, this weird thing that I've got no idea what the hell it is, but we are going to use another cylinder for that. So yep, make sure it sits on the bottom. Let's make it a little bit thinner because it's not such a main component and let's scale it down until it is until it is about you know, over there kind of like this that seems about right and let's not do these guys right now yeah let's not do that yet so you know, keep that over there and let's add a little bit of doors and windows to this guy to make it seem like an actual cabin so first of all what I want to do is I want to delete the face on the bottom because we already have a floor this is gonna act as the floor and one other thing I want to do is I want to separate this whole thing so I'm gonna select this whole piece on top I'm gonna press, press P and I'm gonna uh, separate by selection now this is a an individual object which is exactly what I want because now it's a lot easier to work with this uh, this guy than having to do with uh, to deal with the geometry on top as well so all right let's um, let's do the, the doors and the windows so for that I'm gonna do a loop cut over here in the middle and I want my door to be one meter uh, in length so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another loop cut on this side I'm gonna move it all the way to the left until it's it hits the middle the middle the middle loop cut and now I'm gonna press G X and move it um, half the distance of a meter to the right so that's 50 centimeters so 0.5 and do the same thing over this side and move it minus 0.5 and now if I dissolve this edge I get a clean one meter one meter length look at over here all right I want my door height to be about 2.1 meters so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a loop cut horizontally move it all the way down and I'm gonna move it upwards by 2.1 and that's my door over there if I delete this face now I've got a door and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side so I'm gonna do a loop cut in the middle 0.5 and 0.5 as well but this time I want to you know, make the loop cut go 1.1 meters up from uh, just about where the floor is so I've placed the the loop cut over there and now I'm gonna press G Z and 2.1 and yep I've got a, another door just about here and now that I look at it I think I want it to be a little bit shorter this this door and the reason I want to do that is because I want to have a little bit more room over here so if this is currently 1.1 let's make sure it is about 1.9 so we need to subtract um, like 20 centimeters so G Z and do minus 0.2 and now we have a 1.9 meters door and I'm gonna dissolve this face and let's see shouldn't have what the hell no I think I've messed it up I think I've removed the no I didn't <laughs> I'm just stupid all right uh, let's do another loop cut to 
just above just underneath that uh, that floor and now I've got this piece over here which I'm gonna delete and we have a door over there as well um, we're gonna do the same thing for our uh, for our windows so I'm gonna do a window over here and another window over this area so you know it's the same process I'm adding a loop cut in the middle and one one Im really important thing that I've actually forgotten to uh, point out in this tutorial but I've used in my in my project is to use a human mesh to reference your scale so if I go to import an FBX and I go to some place on my computer where I hold that I'm gonna find a nice humanoid uh, model so this dude reference that FBX if I import this guy now I've got a generic human model which is 1.8 meters tall you know which is a an average person and you can use it to reference your scale and I usually just keep one of one or two guys reference guys uh, like this so you know keep one over there and let's duplicate it add it on the second floor as well so we can use it to reference our scales and dimensions and I want to use this guy in order to determine uh, the height and the width of my window so I'm gonna rotate this guy by 9 degrees I'm gonna place him right over there where I want my window to be and now you know I can do it like this and I've got this loop cut which I'm gonna control the, the width of the window with so an easy way to do that is selecting the edge and pressing ctrl B which is usually used for beveling but you can do that on, surf, on, a, on a flat surfaces as well and it ensures you that you get a, an equal width to the left and to the right as well which is really nice so I'm gonna jump to the side view like this I'm going I'm gonna go into the wireframe view I'm gonna press ctrl B now I'm gonna you know choose just how much of a window I want so for instance I think this width is pretty pretty good and another thing I'm gonna use is doing a, a couple of loop cuts in order to determine the start uh, the bottom the bottom and the top of the window so you know I want my window to be around the guy's waistline so maybe something like that and I think that I can use this loop cut which is the one for the top of the door in order to in order to to recycle it for the top of the window frame so I'm happy with that I'm gonna select the face I'm gonna delete the face and now I've got a window you know the, the guy is looking out the window which is really nice and I'm gonna do the same exact thing for uh, this wall as well so I'm gonna jump into the back view and I'm gonna do a loop cut in the middle I'm gonna jump into the wireframe view control B that to control the beveling like so and once again I'm gonna use top part of my door to to be the top part of my window so I'm only gonna do now is add a look at around this guy's waistline as well and now I'm gonna delete this face and we have another window all right so this is pretty much the block out for the cabin let's uh, let's move forward with some other things um, I've got my original project open up on my secondary window monitor to you know check out my original work and reference back to it so, so I don't forget shit all right I think we can take care of first let's add a little bit more uh, a couple of cylinders onto the sides so if you look in the image you can see there's actually like a cylinder on all uh, on 
all four corners. So, you know, let's let's actually do that. I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm going to make its origin point sit at the bottom. I'm going to place it on top over here. So, make sure it sits on the floor and I'm actually going to isolate these two objects and I want to make sure that the origin point, so this little dot sits right on the corner of that. So, I'm going to make the best uh, I can with uh, with my eye to do that. It doesn't have to be perfect, not at all, just the general position to be in there. And now I can resize this, you know, so I'm gonna make it kind of like that and I'm gonna make sure it goes all the way up into the roof. And I'm gonna check that this guy doesn't actually go, you know, it's not, it's not uh, too thick that it goes out like that. Right now, Sorry, right now it looks all right, it's safe, but uh, for the sake of uh, safety and sculpting measurements, I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner, just like that, just to have a little bit more room in that area. And yep, uh, one thing I can do this because we're not, never gonna see the caps, I can just select those and I can delete them. I can make this a smooth object and this is what we get right now and let's just copy this and put it in all the corners so I'm gonna shift it that guy and I'm gonna move it to the other side of the cabin like so and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side so I just selected both of them shift D, and I'm gonna move them into their place and now all corners are covered, but we have a couple of weird things. So this guy, you know, it looks stupid because it doesn't make any sense the way it sits and this guy as well. So what I ended up doing into my final project, final project is I didn't give a shit about how this guy is looking like. Uh, you can actually just delete it because we're gonna render this guy from like this area so you don't see anything over there. I'm not gonna delete it because uh, in my final project I didn't do that either so I'm gonna keep it there but I don't care about the way it looks over here and the way it looks over here because even though it looks like shit and you shouldn't do this if the camera can see then I don't give a shit about it uh, that's my motto and this guy as well uh, for this guy in order to save like this area what I ended up doing is moving it down you know into into the ground level and uh, I kind of reuse this in a more of in a more um, strategic way so it kind of feels like this guy is also a supporting pillar like these other guys so because i moved that downward i'm gonna scale it up until it reaches the the roof piece once again i'm gonna apply the scale and rotation and you know this is where we are at the moment we are advancing pretty pretty nicely um this guy also looks a little bit bad over there but i'm not gonna care because, once again, from the perspective that we are going to render this image, we can see that. So, once again, if no one can see it, then I'm going to act blind and uh, trick myself into not caring about that either. Alright, so we are in a good place with, um, with our uh, block out. I just realized I looked over here and I realized that I've uh, started naming stuff in the beginning but I never hold up to that which is something I always do I never you know rename my layers let's continue with this block out and what I want to do next is I want to take care of the roof so if you take a look at the roof we see that there's you know a couple of things going on it's nice um, yeah, let's do the heating 
kind of thing first and then let's make this trap door and we're pretty much all right with that so i'm gonna create a new cylinder as well i'm gonna make you guessed it the original seat at the bottom i'm gonna move that all the way onto the roof i'm gonna make sure that it's sitting on the bottom just like that and let's find a proper space for this guy so you know what i'm gonna do a lg one and i'm just gonna you know what forget what i was doing <laughs> just make sure this guy is sitting on top like this and let's place it where we want this guy to be i'm gonna make it a little bit bigger i'm gonna make it six seat over there that's pretty fine and let's see yeah the height could be a little bit smaller and i'm gonna delete the bottom face as well because we don't see that and if we don't see it we don't care about it i'm gonna take this face i'm gonna insert it and i'm gonna uh, you know extrude it downwards until we get this i'm gonna shade it smooth i'm gonna do auto smooth so it looks all right and yeah that looks uh pretty pretty okay what i want to do now though is as you can see this guy is intersecting intersecting with with this edge over here and i want to make this edge kind of follow this curve so for that what i'm gonna do is add a couple of loop cuts like this i'm gonna make sure the number of cuts so if you look down on the bottom over here i'm gonna make sure that the number of loop cuts is something uh it's an odd number so five works five is all right and the the reason i want an odd number is because whenever you have odd numbers there's always gonna be one edge that's uh, sitting in the middle while if you have a an even number you're not gonna get that no okay so i just made sure that this is a perfect perfectly straight line and you can do that by hitting s x and zero to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned so for instance this guy is not aligned as you can see but if you do an s x zero it makes the the line straight like that but yeah i don't care right now so let's just isolate these two layers and i'm gonna select that edge over there i'm gonna move it like so but now that i look at it i'm just gonna control z all those loop cuts because i want more of them in order to make that uh to make that curvature a little bit more a little bit better so i'm gonna use seven actually and now i'm gonna isolate this layer and i'm gonna take that edge i'm gonna pull it outwards so you can use the uh what's this called like the proportional editing tool sure i just uh i just know it didn't look quite all right when i try that and this is looking pretty blocky that's all right because we are not gonna see that so yep i'm gonna actually add a loop cut in those places because i want to have a little bit more roundness so gonna pop that guy up and that guy as well All right, that's that's quite all right again we can't really see it i just wanted to do it because why not so now i can select those and dissolve edges because those are irrelevant they don't help with anything so yeah just return back to normal and looking at the reference there's a couple of uh, bars 
going so you know let's do that i'm gonna add another cylinder you guessed it you guessed it again i'm gonna make the origin point sit at the bottom i'm gonna delete top and nope not that delete those faces shade is smooth go back like this and you know i'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees just so it sits over there i'm gonna look to the top rotate at 90 degrees once again i'm gonna make sure this uh, i can see it so i'm gonna make it a i'm gonna make it thinner like that and i'm gonna place it right in there i'm gonna make sure it goes all the way like that i'm gonna make it a little bit thinner because why not and yeah let's just uh, copy those all over so just move those guys like so that's fine this uh, part as well and now you need to resize those so they don't stick out all right we got that done i'm gonna select everything apply the rotation and scale to all my meshes and this is where we are at the moment which is pretty nice um all right what else do we want to do um i think this is all right for the base model at the moment uh one other thing we're gonna do after which we're gonna end this this part one is we're actually gonna do like the individual logs like the planks it's actually the word uh, the individual planks over the first floor and the second floor as well and then in the next video we're gonna we're gonna do the the planks for for the cabin walls as well but before that i just realized we need to make that little trap door on the roof so for that i'm gonna add a uh, cube that's right i'm gonna make the pivot point sit at the bottom and not just at the bottom but on one of the sides so you know you can rotate it like that like an actual trap I'm gonna resize this and I'm gonna make it you know, a little bit longer on this axis I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger like so and I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make it be like 10 centimeters no that's way too much let's make it three cent centimeters on, on in height like so that's that's all right and what i'm gonna do now is instead of having it placed right in the middle like it's in the concept i've actually moved it uh, here i don't remember an actual reason for why i did that i just wanted to you know do that and for those guys you know going like the metal parts uh, what i did is I've just added a couple of uh, loop cuts like so and I'm gonna dissolve those because I only wanted these two and with these two loop cuts uh, selected I'm gonna go ctrl B to bevel those out and I'm gonna decide on a size for those and with those faces selected what I'm gonna do now is um, yeah, what I'm gonna do now is press Alt E, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do extrude faces along normals. Uh, so now we can extrude those faces like this, and look at that. We have um, we have what we wanted basically. So I'm gonna I'm gonna isolate this mesh, and one thing that I don't like is the fact that it extruded downwards as well. And I don't want that. I want this to be a flat surface. So for that, I'm gonna jump into one of the orthographic views. I'm gonna select everything that's on the on the bottom, and I'm gonna do S Z zero to make sure that everything's flat out. 
just like this and that's exactly what I wanted I'm gonna do for for safety measures I'm gonna select everything and do a um, like what was that like merge by distance to make sure that uh, you know we don't have double vertices in some place or not that's all right um, depending on what you want to do with this piece so like if you want it to be animated and you're gonna you know rotate it like this or something then it's uh, you need to keep that face but if you are like me and you only want to do the render then you can actually delete everything that's on the bottom altogether so delete those faces and now you save up some more vertices some more polygons and no one will ever know because that's always gonna sit like that in there and it's never gonna move which is which is fine all right so uh, as i said let's do um let's do the individual planks and that's pretty much it for for today's video for for this first episode so Okay, so this is the first floor and we're gonna do a little bit of uh, dividing in order to uh, understand our planks. So this is a 4x4 four four meter, so that's 400 centimeters. So if you have a 400 centimeters, then I kind of want my... make sure that... you know what? Let me let me let me show you, not just explain you because people understand better <laughs> when you show them things. All right, so this is gonna be my plank, right? It's it's a cube. I'm gonna make it uh, sit on the bottom like that. I'm actually going make gonna make it the origin sit on one of the one of the sides like that. Uh, this guy is two meters up in the air, so let's do two meters for this guy as well. And for now, let's make um, like let's make the height be 13 centimeters, just so it is a little bit above our ground, and we can see better what we are working with. So right now, this guy is sitting in the middle, so right in the middle, and this being a four by four, in order to make it sit perfectly on this edge, we're gonna have to move it to two meters to that side. So now it's exactly in the same spot. You can tell that two objects, two faces are in the same exact position when you get this flickering going on that's, that's just the Z buffer not understanding which face you want it to, to render so, you know, the faces fight for for being rendered first so you get that flickering effect, but that's a good thing that means that the, object, the objects are sitting right in the same position which is what we want alright, so this is a 4x4 as I said so for the for the length of this plank I'm gonna do uh, 4 on the X axis and what I ended up doing with my final uh, my final project my actual project is I've made this guy to be like 50 centimeters and the value of 50 centimeters is not randomly selected the way I've chosen 50 is because this guy is a 4x4, four four, so 400 centimeters, and 50 is, you know, 400 is a multiplier of 50. So, you know, now when I when I want when I need to know how many planks I need to add in order to fit this whole 4 meter area, I can basically do 400. Uh, divided by 50 and you know get the number 8 so what I'm gonna do right now is since this is sitting in the middle I'm gonna move it two meters to that side but now half of it is uh, half of it is outside you know the actual block out so what I'm gonna do is move it 25 centimeters like so and now you can see it's in the same position and as I said, I've just did a little, uh, I did, li did a little bit of math, so I know that I need eight uh, planks in order to fit this guy. So I'm gonna select this guy. I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna move it um, like uh, 
0.5 that direction and now I'm simply gonna do shift R and it's gonna uh, it's gonna it's gonna recreate the the last action I've done so shift R shift R shift R and now you know we have one two three four five six seven eight and it perfectly encapsulates our uh, our block out so I'm gonna select all of those because I actually wanna make them be, you know, 10 centimeters, not 10 fucking meters. Right, so I'm gonna select that guy, I'm gonna hide it, and I'm gonna take all those guys, yeah, it doesn't matter, uh, yeah, sure, can I do multiple, 0.4? No, it doesn't work like that. So, all right, let's do 0.4 on each one of those. That's all right. Uh, no, I've chosen the number 13th just to, to to be able to show you what we are doing in a better way. All right, so now all of those are 10 centimeters high, which is what we actually want. So I'm going to... Take this whole piece and I'm actually gonna make sure we never have it in the viewport anymore because we've already replaced it with this better block out which actually holds individual planks as well. Alright, so oh, the same thing we're gonna do for this bit over here. So this guy is 2.5, that's perfect because it, it can be divided, it's dividable by 50. I want to keep the same uh, 50 dimension for the for the planks, but this 2.7 it's not really doing it. So oh, I think I'm gonna do like three meters, just because it's a lot easier to work with it that way. Actually, I don't even care because the logs are gonna be this way, and I can just resize them that way, however however I want. So, I'm gonna copy one of those planks, I'm gonna isolate it with uh, this block out. I'm gonna rotate this guy like 180 degrees. And so, this guy was what, like 277, let's make it 2.77 perfectly. Because now I wanna take this guy and I wanna move it 2 meters, 0.77. Now it's perfectly aligned with my stuff over there. And let's see. All right. Um, I'm actually gonna move it like this until. Yeah, that's it's better this way. Easier. Yeah, just, just make them be in the same location roughly and now I'm gonna move this guy up until it sits right inside of the block out just like this and yep I'm gonna rescale it on the X what the fuck? Oh no, I'm rotating it. Okay. Uh, resize it kind of like that. And, you know, this is 50, this is 2.5. We need 5 of those. So I'm gonna copy that. 0.5. And I'm gonna take the original piece and I'm gonna do the same thing with it. I'm gonna disable it. And now I've got the logs this place over here and let's do this piece as well and then a couple of other adjustments and we are done for this video so all right took those guys i'm gonna rotate this guy by 90 degrees and i'm gonna i'm gonna place it right over there so let's do that by using the vertex tool and that was a lot easier, you know. And alright, this is what this is. So 
let's do 454 just like that and do the same for this guy I'm gonna copy that paste it over here yep that's fine and on the x s axis this is one it's a number that I don't like so let's do so that's 50 and let's do 1.5 like so it's all right let me move this guy um actually you know what i'm gonna do the same thing so the vertex yeah that's fine now i've got this plank over here I'm gonna copy it, move it by 50 centimeters and shift R to copy the same action and this guy I'm gonna you know disable it and look at that now we've got like actual planks individual planks which is what we're gonna use in the next video to sculpt the high poly version of our, our assets um, okay what else do we have over here yeah one other thing i wanted to do is so right now those guys are you know perfectly aligned both on the sides and in height as well so what i ended up doing is you know i've slightly moved some of those a little bit outwards uh, maybe like so maybe this guy as well is a little bit so just enough to break you know the silhouette and not have everything sit perfectly so this guy i'm gonna scale it a little bit in that direction this guy as well this guy too let's take that guy over there and do some of that and now already we have some more interest because we've done that and another thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move some of those a little bit up like so so we break you know when we look like when we look from this direction we don't see a perfect line we see a little bit of a height variation so some of those are gonna go uh, in the up direction some of those are gonna go down just be creative with what you're doing that's all you need to do and already we have some some more interest because we've done you know slight changes like that I'm gonna do the same thing for for this so you know, I'm gonna scale some of those in different ways something like that and I'm gonna move some of those up maybe this guy goes a little bit down and let's do the same thing for for those planks as well yeah and let's do this guy a little bit upwards this guy a little bit down apply the rotation and scale to all of our meshes and we are good at the moment i've changed my mind i'm gonna do the plank block out for for this guy as well since we are already doing that so um, let's just take one of those pieces and isolate those guys so I'm gonna rotate this by 90 degrees I'm gonna jump into one of the side views and I'm gonna put this guy Yeah, that's all right I'm gonna move it 50 centimeters that way that's all right and I'm actually gonna do like I want this side of the plank to be right on this side of the block out so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move this guy 10 centimeters that way and I'm gonna scale it so I'm gonna copy the Z value of this block out and I'm gonna paste it in the 
the Z over here. So now it's the, the same height. And the reason, you know, I went with 2.5 and 2.25 uh, is because those are dividable by 50, which is really cool. So what I'm gonna do now is move those like this. And as you can see, this is not sitting really well over there, so I've made a little bit of mistake maybe, but don't worry about that. Let's do, come on, let's do another one, so like so, and I'm just gonna uh, take this face and I'm gonna move it 25 centimeters that way, and that's all right. Now, now, now that's fine. And I'm gonna take this guy. Gonna do those sides as well. So make sure it sits on the same area. Point one. And let's copy those guys. That's great. Um as you can see, those guys are fighting in here. And you can either take one of those and move it a little bit, you know, so move it like 10 centimeters that way, which is uh, fine. But don't forget that you all, we also have those pillars that are gonna hide those artifacts. So you can either care or not care, not, the result is gonna be exactly the same. So, you know. Uh, your choice what you're doing all right so let me get like those guys back yeah like that and I mean we can just take uh, actually you know what let me select all of those because we can work faster that way so if I select all of those like this and so how big is this is 2.5 so I can select those pieces shift D and move them 2.5 in that direction and no they're, they're gonna be fine but I want to move them um, let's let's see yeah, let's do minus 0.1 so they are facing exactly that way all right and we are gonna take those guys and we are gonna do the same thing but first of all let me like take care of this side so minus 0.1 that's all right take those pieces shift d and do 2.25 that direction but now we also need to move it point one all right and now we have taken care of that and what the last thing we need to do is you know take care of the windows and and the door frame and we're gonna do that with booleans um yeah so isolate this layer and what you're gonna do now is we are gonna take the doorway so so let's take the doorway press f p you know now let's do the same for this doorway so f p this guy f p and this guy is with FP. Right. And now we can, first of all, I want to take this guy and move it a little bit downwards like that. And now we can combine those guys. I think that should be safe. So Control J to combine those guys. And now we can add a 
solidify modifier those guys like so and we are gonna use those primitives to cut out the holes in our uh, plank so if we turn if we go back to our view and let me be able to select this whole piece and I'm gonna make sure we don't see it anymore all right so I'm now I'm gonna go through all the logs that are intersecting with one of those objects and I'm gonna do a boolean on those so I'm gonna take this first guy do a boolean difference and I'm gonna select those pieces and now you can see it it cut a hole in our in our geometry which is exactly one what we want so I'm gonna select all the other planks that are intersecting with uh, with those pieces like so and this guy this guy this guy and now I'm gonna select this guy which has the already the boolean already on it and I'm gonna do control L and do uh, make links to the modifiers so now we have you know all those spaces everywhere because we've just shared the same modifier on all of those guys and that was a really easy way to to do the holes and I'm gonna hide those guys as well and this is you know pretty much the the main block out that we are gonna uh, take into doing the the high poly and all the detail on, details on but that's gonna have to wait for the next video this is it for the for the first part of the series this was the block out and yeah i hope you enjoy the process it was kind of you know it was relaxing it was really a kind of simple way of modeling what we need to model